Welcome back, ladies. Today we're going to talk about generational curses. We'll then take a look at some examples of generational curses and how to overcome them. And finally, at the end of the video, I'll share comments from 50 women who are breaking or who have broken generational curses. A generational curse is a belief often rooted in religious or cultural contexts, that certain negative traits, behaviors, or experiences can be passed down from one generation to another within a family or community. It suggests that a family's history of difficulties, struggles, or problematic patterns can continue to affect subsequent generations, almost as if there's a spiritual or karmic force at play. These curses are typically thought to stem from a variety of sources, such as past wrongdoings, transgressions, or unresolved issues within the family. Some cultures or belief systems attribute generational curses to divine punishment, ancestral spirits, or supernatural forces that perpetuate negative outcomes over time. The concept of generational curses is based on beliefs and faith rather than empirical evidence. Empirical evidence is information that can be seen, measured, or experienced. From a psychological standpoint, generational patterns can be explained by factors such as learned behaviors, environmental influences, socioeconomic conditions, and the perpetuation of family dynamics. Generational curses can manifest in various ways, impacting families for generations. Here are a few examples to shed light on what they might look like. Financial struggles. Imagine your grandparents and parents struggled with money. They never had a strong financial foundation, and this trend continued. This financial stress could become a generational curse, affecting your own relationship with money. Unhealthy relationships. If toxic relationships, divorces, or domestic violence were prevalent in your family, it might create a pattern that continues. You might find yourself repeating similar patterns unless you break the cycle. Substance abuse. Substance abuse can be another generational curse. If addiction was part of your family history, the risk of it affecting you could be higher. Now that we've identified some examples, let's talk about how to break free from these patterns and create a positive change for ourselves and future generations. Awareness and reflection. The first step is recognizing the patterns. Reflect on your family's history and the challenges you've faced. Awareness is key to understanding what needs to change. Seeking help. You don't have to do this alone. Seek therapy, counseling, or support groups to help you address and heal from these patterns. Creating new habits. Intentionally develop new habits and behaviors that go against the negative patterns. It might take time, but replacing the old with the new is a powerful way to break the curse. Educate yourself, read books, attend workshops, and learn about healthy relationships, finances, and emotional well-being. Education empowers you to make informed choices. Mindset shift. Shift your mindset from I can't change this to I can create a different path. Your beliefs influence your actions. Generational curses are real, but they don't define us. With awareness, determination, and the right strategies, we can break free from these cycles and create a brighter future for ourselves and the generations to come. Remember, positive change is possible, one step at a time. Now let's take a look at 50 comments from women about generational curses. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Leave your comments about generational curses in the comments. Let me know which generational curses you have broken or are working on breaking. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. My kids do not have to leave my house at 18 years old. Heavy on the, you ain't gotta hug nobody, you don't feel comfortable with hugging, and I mean nobody. My son eats 40 pound steaks when we go out to eat. He's 14 and loves his steaks. I could never when I was younger. He will not miss out. My kid chooses sushi and you know what? Mama wants sushi too, bestie. The book fair. My mom had money for cigarettes and soda, but I couldn't have a Clifford book and Cinderella pencil. My son earns chore money and enjoys what he buys. Normalizing apologizing to our kids is one of the best parenting trends ever. I'm 37 and my mom has never apologized. My son is going to speech therapy instead of being yelled at. He is going to be the best him possible. I didn't get toys growing up, so now my kids are buried in toys. You want to play? Play all day. 
My mom wouldn't buy my yearbooks at the end of the year. My future kids definitely won't be missing out on the things that bring them joy. No yelling, drama, or fighting in the house, just peace and to talk with my kids, not at them. My kids know that our weekly grocery trip means a treat for each of them, so they give me their list that morning. 100%, I have removed the toxic environment for my kids. I have had to learn it had to stop. I do my best. I understand my mother had her own curse to break, but she didn't stay away from the party life. I'm going to try to be better for my future kids. My mom used to say, ish rolls downhill as she used me. It hit a wall when it hit me. It ended with me. It stopped with me because I'm not having children. I'll never have a kid just like me moment. The use ended with me. My children will never go through what I did. I could never hurt them. They are my life. I broke my generational trauma. I refuse to hurt my children the way I was hurt. They are so kind but have strong and healthy boundaries I never did. Ending the cycle is the best way to heal to be honest. I was used, but I refuse to ever let my kids feel that pain. I love my daughters extra more because my mother didn't love me. My daughters will know mother-daughter bonds because of me. I will break this cycle. I'll never put my son through what my parents put me through. I'm so messed up today because of it. So it's hard, but we got it. My children have no idea what I lived through and my mom before me. I made sure of it. I broke the cycle in my family for not having a ton of kids and going to college and buying a house. My daughter and son have a future now. The cycle broke with me. My kids are 18 and 20 and never spanked. They are awesome young adults thriving in college. It is possible. My husband is currently breaking his dad's cycle. Our baby son will never be physically used by his father. My dad used to say, don't know how to be a dad, never really had one. He was used, we weren't. He did all right. I could write a book about the things my mother put me through. I have two teenage daughters. They'll never know that feeling. I picked up my daughters and raised my daughters away from my toxic siblings. Limited contact in the beginning now, no contact for years. It's okay to stay up late and sleep in on the weekends. And it's not lazy to rest when you're tired. Listen when your kids tell you that they don't want to go to certain family's house. If we have company and my kids don't feel like socializing, I don't make them. Yes, teach your kids that it's okay to have opinions and preferences. They will be better advocates for themselves in adulthood. I never understood math. My mom kept me up past 10 p.m. to finish my math homework. I will not yell if Sally had six apples. I won't be the one. My girls will rest when on their periods. My kids will be able to choose what I am to make for dinner for them. Chores are not gender-based. Grooming and personal hygiene is for everyone, not ladies only. I can go all day long, but I am breaking these curses. My boy should understand that it's okay for him to cry. My boy has to understand what period and contraceptives does to ladies. My boy has to know chores. Another one to add, my kitchen will never close. If my son is hungry at 3 a.m., there's no reason why he can't have a healthy snack option. My future kids will know what help is, and they will know how to ask for help without being scared or afraid. If you need help, then don't hesitate to ask. My kids are under no obligation to hug anyone they don't want to. I have never forced them for hugs and kisses from any relative. My son told me the other day that he did not want to hug my aunt because she made him uncomfortable. So I said, sorry, he will just say hi, ending the bloodline on my father's side. If my kids don't like their hairstyle that way, then we can change it to another one. Yes, be open with kids. This world is crazy. Don't be afraid to explain and break down things. I apologize to my kids if I'm having a bad day. I always apologize to my daughter and let her know my behavior is not okay. I want to show her I can hold myself accountable. I've lost count how many times I genuinely apologize to my kiddos. I can't count the times my mom apologized to me because she never did. I got snippy with my kid this morning. I was feeling bad about it all day, came home from work and apologized to him. He said he didn't even realize you said it like that completely unfazed, and I was feeling bad all day at work. Teen pregnancy, marrying early to use of men, divorces. I'm almost 30 with no kids and have yet to be married because I saw the patterns in my family. I was the first person to come forward about the essay and it opened a whole can of worms. Turns out all my cousins, aunt, uncles were victims too. Broke a few, but the big one is poverty. So I'm going to have to figure how to create generational wealth. Wish me luck. 
My family came from a communist country, and now I'm here to break the chains of poverty. My kids will be able to take that nap after school. I used to be so freaking tired, and my dad would scream at me anytime he saw me falling asleep. When I have kids and they tell me they're feeling down and depressed, I will hear them out and let them take a mental health day off.